folks, this is Shane. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Joyo Momix. Before we hear what this can do, I just want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Artist Guitars in conjunction with Joyo. Like always, I'll give you my thoughts about this product at the end of the video, and I think you'll get a kick out of what the Momix can offer, whether you're a live streamer or someone who wants to do any type of mobile recording. The Joyo Momix is a fully integrated sound card and live mixer designed to be used either as a recording solution on the go, or to up your live stream production quality. The Joyo Momix allows you to connect just about anything into it, from a condenser microphone that you're listening to right now that requires phantom power, to a guitar, bass, or any other line input device. What makes the Joyo Momix unique is that it's also a mixer. This isn't just a one channel device, so you can plug multiple things into it and then mix those instruments or whatever you have plug into it out for streaming or recording purposes. There's not a lot of products like this on the market and as a portable recorder, it's fantastic because it doesn't require any extra power supplies to get the unit to run. Just simply plug it into your phone and you're good to go. What you're about to hear is a track I recorded using the Joyo Mo Mix going into my iPhone 11 using GarageBand. I used a mix of amp sim recordings for the bass and rhythm guitar and then changed it up using the line out on the Joyo DC-15S amplifier for the lead and secondary rhythm parts. Let's take a listen and then I'll give you a full overview of the inputs and outputs. Here's the Joyo Mo Mix up close. We're gonna take a look at the inputs and outputs starting with this XLR input over here that also doubles as a line level input. It also accepts phantom power as you heard when I was talking with the Rode NT2A condenser microphone. Or if you have something like an SE Dynamite and you wanna power something like an SM7B, you can power this and then power the mic. I think that's really great. And being that this doesn't need its own power supply, that's pretty flexible. Just down from the XLR, we have two more inputs. So this can be used with something like an electronic drum kit or a keyboard or whatever you want to plug it into it that requires a stereo instrument line in. Just down from the instrument in, we have the guitar and bass input. And you heard this in the intro track. I ran the bass directly into this and loaded up an amp sim within GarageBand. And you also heard one of my electric guitar tracks using this exact port. So it works really well. You can adjust the gain using this control here. This microphone volume pot also adjusts the volume of this microphone input up the top. And if you wanna adjust the instrument input that we looked at over here, simply use this potentiometer over here. This left side of the unit is designed with all the outputs in mind to either do live streaming or recording. So being that this is an interface for a phone, you also have the additional option to send a 3.5 millimeter output into a secondary phone that might have a 3.5 millimeter input, for example, giving you that TRRS audio connection directly out, or you can use this to record a separate audio stream. Over here we have the karaoke switch, or at least that's what I'm gonna call it. It's actually called center cancel. Now you can either have this on or off. When you enable it, say for example, you're playing back some commercial music that already has vocals, this will help take out that center channel and reduce the volume. And then you can basically use the microphone input to sing over the top of it. Very similar to how karaoke works. I won't be using that in this video whatsoever. Over here, we have our line in. So what this can be used for, say for example, you're on your own and you wanna to jam to a backing track and you also wanna sing and play guitar or bass. The beauty of this is you can play the backing track or drum track through here with an MP3 play, for example, and then set up your mix accordingly here and have everything going out to your audience. 
We also get a monitor option one and two here. These are two 3.5 millimeter outputs. These work great with either headphones and you can turn the volume up and down here thanks to the monitor tab or you can run it out into a separate mixer if you ever need to do that and that option works really well. I did that as a sense of redundancy on this video. If you saw my computer recording, that's what was going on. There's also a monitor input button on and off here. Now, if you're recording with amp sim, it's probably best to leave that off. But if you wanna hear both the dry and the wet signal, you can leave that on. Depending on your particular situation, just play around with this for the best results. If you've got an Android phone, all you'll need is the provided cable. This is a USB A type, the A type is here, to the USB C type over here, and this will just work no problems at all. Now, if you have a computer, this will also be used to plug into the computer. This side goes from the Momix, and this side goes into the computer. What it didn't come with though, sadly, is one of these connectors, and I'll leave links to these in the description below. This is a USB to lightning connector for iPhone, and with just by plugging this in, it worked no problems at all. It's a bit of a downer, they didn't actually include this with the pack, but again, I'll leave links to these in the description below. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. I'm gonna wrap this up by talking a little bit about what I've learned about this particular unit. Now, just to give you some behind the scenes, anytime I'm approached to review something or if I get an opportunity to a sponsored video, I usually say, hey, send it out, let me check it out and I'll see what I think. I had no expectations of this being very good and I was wrong. It actually works really well for what it is, but you've got to keep in context just how small this is, right? So this wouldn't replace a multi-channel sound card for a computer, but what it can do is work extremely well with phones. So if you're someone who makes YouTube videos using your phone and you want a solution to get multiple inputs in into a phone or out to an audience via live streaming, then this would be a no-brainer. It works really well. I love the fact that the XLR adapter sounds very, very clean. When you heard it earlier with this Rode NT2A, I had to listen back before filming this part. I think it sounded really, really good. It sounded far better than this microphone. So you can do a lot with this, but it's designed for someone who knows their way around something like GarageBand or any other number of suites like that if you're gonna be recording to your phone or iPad or whatever the case may be. And I also plugged it into my Mac back here and it was detected as a sound card. So you have that option as well. Being that this is as small and as light as it is, I'll be taking this with me whenever I can travel overseas again because I only need one input like this. This is gonna be great as a one XLR input adapter. It means I can do podcasts on the road. It means I can record guitar very loud thanks to that you know, XLR input over here as well. So it's got a lot of stuff going for it that nothing else really has. So I'm actually a bit of a fan of this. I had no expectations. My only thing about it is it does feel very small and it does feel very light and it may shock you that it's you know far lighter than a phone would be. So yeah, it is as light as it looks, but the dials and all that kind of stuff feel good and the inputs feel very secure. If you're someone who wants to up their live streaming game and get multiple inputs out to your audience, this would be an absolute no brainer, especially for YouTubers or content creators who are just using their onboard phone microphone. This will completely change the game for those guys. While the unit itself doesn't really require a learning curve, it does require a learning curve to get used to the software that you'll be using with this. But spend some time with it and you'll be able to get as, as good or better results than I did on that little jam track. Thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.